What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Wealth Webinar. I am so excited. Today, we're going to be talking about you becoming your own bank, but we're going to be talking about it with your retirement dollars. Now, let me open this up and just talk about retirement dollars. That means 401ks, 403bs, 457s, IRAs, Roth IRAs, SEP IRAs. I'm going to stop right there. That amounts to roughly $35 trillion with a T in this country. $35 trillion sits in qualified funds, and most people don't even know the first thing when it comes to their retirement dollars. I mean, you all, when, when I ask all of you, if you, what you know about your 401k, most people will repeat, well, I know I'm invested in a diversified portfolio. Some people will say they're in conservative, moderate, or high risk. And other people will say, I don't have a clue. They do all that for me, which is the worst answer you could ever do. You know, I'll never forget when I was a kid, my grandmother, uh, God, God love her soul. I mean, she was, she, her and her, my grandpa worked at Harrison Radiator. They made radiators and parts for cars. They did their 30 years, retired, got their pension. And I'll never forget my grandma who, who lived in a mobile home park community. One day said to me, she said, Chris, when you get a job, make sure you ask them if they have a 401k. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. All right, grandma. So what is a 401k? Well, a 401k is a place where you can put your money, save, so that someday later when you retire, you don't have to be like grandma or grandpa and I. I said, great, grandma, Any, anything else? And she said, yeah, when you ask them if they have a 401k, if they do, make sure you ask them if they have a match. Okay, so that stuck with me. Now, I was probably 15, 16 years old. When I got into Wall Street and I got my first real corporate job, I remember sitting in the interview and answering all their questions. And then they always come back and say, what questions do you have for us? Recalling what grandma said, I said, well, do you have a retirement plan? Yes, we have a 401k. Great. Uh, second question, grandma came to me. Oh, yes. Do you guys match? Yes, we do. We match 3% dollar for dollar. So that meant for the first 3% I put into the 401k, they would match me dollar for dollar. Off I went. I started putting money in the 401k, very small amounts, because in the beginning, I wasn't making anything. But then later, as I made more money, I put more in. And I think by the time I left, I was putting roughly 14% of my pay into the 401k. Now, most of you are like, what's the point of this story? The point is, for 14 years, while I was with that company, I was giving up my control of the money I had. All the money I was putting into this retirement account, I was giving up control to a financial company. I was an advisor and I had a very small basket of mutual funds to invest in. I had some small caps, mid caps, large caps, maybe a few internationals and a fixed account. Now, at that time, I didn't think anything of that. And I went on to sell probably, I want to say tens of millions of dollars worth of, four, worth of 401k plans, but as a group, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of 401ks all along, never even realizing that what we were actually doing is the opposite of what we should be doing. We were giving up control of our money, hence why there is $35 trillion. And actually, uh, the government is now trying to pass another uh, bill, which is going to then allow employers to automatically enroll every single employer, or I'm sorry, every single employee into a 401k, it is going to force matches for most employers, which might not be such a bad thing. And it's going to push the RMD limits out to 73. This is proposed. It still has to be approved. Point of the matter is, do you really want to be believing in the whole thing that you're going to put your money away for someday in the future, 59 and a half, where you're going to sail off into the sunset and live all your dreams? I mean, heck, when I was an advisor, they always taught us, well, most people will be in a lower tax bracket when they retire. And I would... Why? Well, because they're going to make less money. For me, retirement, and for most of you, retirement probably comes down to that time when we can actually have financial freedom. We can actually go out and do all the things we couldn't do in our working years. And technically, some of you, it is sailing off into the sunset on your sailboat. Others, it might be traveling around and seeing all the places that you never got to see when you were working and raising a family and you know various other things. But how can you do that when you make less money in retirement than you make during your working years. The two don't quite add up. I feel like we have a very broken system, but you know, we're here today with Stephen and Greg Hurley. Greg Hurley, I'll never forget it, 2014, one of the hardest periods of time in my life. I'm at a real estate convention. Greg gets up on stage 
you know, it was him and Mike, two very successful real estate investors. You could tell these guys were crushing it. And Greg proceeds to say, the ultimate in real estate is being the bank. I had no idea what he meant. And I had no idea what the next several years were going to mean to me when that one thing was seared into my brain. And all I had to figure out is, how do I become the bank? So Greg, welcome to Wealth Webinar. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me, Chris. Doing good, man. Absolutely. Well, why don't you just tell everybody just a little bit about yourself and then let's just dive right into being your own bank and what self-directed IRAs actually are. All right. Can you hear me okay? I can yeah. hear you. Perfect. Well, look, I'm, I'm Greg Herlean. Uh, you know, I start with probably most importantly, family man, four kids, and, um, and really been focused on the passive side of things, money, not paying taxes. And so, so for those of you that are on here, there's a couple hundred of you, I think, that are, that are listening right now. And, and so uh, let me tell you that probably 50 or 60% of you all either have a retirement account of some sort, um, either an IRA or an old 401k. Look, 40% of America has changed jobs in the last five years. So, so if, if you are also in, that shoes, in those shoes where you've changed jobs um, or, um, or you know someone's changed jobs, most of you on this call, this, that what I'm going to talk to you about and share a couple examples about can literally change the way you're um, you know, getting money for your deals. It can change the way you can become a passive investor. And, and hold on here. I've got a little bit. Of, I've got to put my... Um, you guys, can you still hear me, Chris? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Perfect. So, 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 so basically, this retirement kind of subject is interesting. I, I, let me just real quick as far as background goes, I started with nothing. I was 23 years old, uh, didn't really know what a retirement account was, uh, wanted to be in the real estate world, and I didn't know exactly how to do it um, because I didn't have money. And so when I learned about retirement accounts and actually how many trillions of dollars were in the retirement accounts, that's when I actually started to find out who could actually start being my banker and my lender. And so my first deal actually in real estate happened to someone else's IRA. They actually lent me money to get into real estate. And so that's where it began. But from there, I was able to do more and more and bigger and bigger deals and then create my own IRA was that where I was able to actually lend my money. But I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit, Chris. Um, I want to back up one second about my, um, you know, tell you real quick a story that might be relatable to some, some of you guys listening is my mom. I remember I was talking to my mom about her retirement account and, and I was young, I was probably like 20 years old and she was telling me about her retirement account and it, and I said, well, tell me about it. And she said, well, you know, I, I you know, I, I've seen you, mom, and they look, look at your statements and, and kind of put them away. But, you know, do you know what you're invested? In? And she does not know what she's invested in. So I said, mom, tell me, tell me further. I've, I've noticed over the years, my mom's a real big organizer. So I don't know if you, if you guys are like this, but maybe you're old school like me where you actually still like paper. I like to get my statements in the mail, right? And so did my mom. So she'd get her retirement account papers in the mail, her statements. And then what would she do? Just like everybody else. She'd open them up and she'd look at what? The bottom, if it went up or down, and then she'd file it away. And that's it. And then my mom got really creative and really good with her time. She then would start getting it in the mail. And after she got it in the mail, she wouldn't even open the envelope. So she would just take the envelope with her statement didn't open it up and just file it away. No one really cared about her money, including herself. And so when I learned about that, I was like, gosh, how many other people actually treated their own retirement money like that? And, it, and I was actually fascinated to learn that so many people are just mi missing the ball. They are totally missing the opportunity to actually take control and invest in things that they understand and like and not pay taxes on it. So anyways, uh, Chris, I'll, I'll stop by just answering the one question you asked, which is what is self-directing and why are we talking about it today? Self-directing is, is simply a concept that the IRS approved in the 70s um, that allows an individual to invest their retirement plan in um, investments and in assets that they know and understand. Could be real estate, could be precious metals, could be Bitcoin, um, so anyway, so that's, that's typically what a self-directed IRA is. It allows you, the investor, to choose what they're going to invest in. Um, if you are um, new to that concept, this has definitely been around a long time. And I'm also assuming you're new to that concept or this concept because most financial advisors don't want you to be investing in this um, because they want you to invest with them because they get their fee regardless if it goes up 
or it goes down. So anyways, um, Chris, I don't know if I explained it, but, um, but self-directing has been kind of a life changer for me. And I got a few more examples to share with you, but I got too excited. And I just started talking about my mom and about her retirement account. And, and in general, I, I just want people to understand in, in today's world, nobody cares more about your money than you do. Absolutely. I think that's fantastic. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you that are listening, and actually, why don't we just do a poll? How many of you have a similar story to a family member, a good friend that kind of fits what Greg just said about his mom? Because I know it, it rings true for me. Put an I in the chat, uh, an I or A-Y-E. I just want to see if that absolutely resonates with either yourself or someone in your family. I mean, it, it's almost everyone. And the other funny thing too, Greg, that I realized is when I was an advisor, I remember I literally remember the day. I remember the day sitting, getting my mail. We had these little mailbox slots in the front. I was getting the mail and, and one of the other advisors was talking about self-directed IRAs. And I remember just getting, piquing my interest. And I went over and I started asking about them and they said to me, don't worry about it. We can't, we can't do anything with these anyway. It's not allowed by the broker deal. So I was with a very large financial company and they didn't allow us to talk about these. And it wasn't because there was anything wrong with them. It wasn't because, you know, it wasn't good for the client. It was because we couldn't get paid for it. The broker dealer only allowed us to do things, sell things and advise on things that we all got paid on, which I guess, hey, if you're in a business, a financial business, they're not nonprofits. They're in the business to make money. And I was in the business to make money as well. So with a self-directed IRA, if I started telling my clients about these awesome self-directed IRAs, which were identical to the IRAs we were selling and charging fees on, of course, like I would get paid nothing because all I'm doing is telling them to move their money into an account that they're going to control, that they're going to direct where the investments go, and they're going to cut me out. So of course we couldn't do it. It would have actually been called selling away. That would have been the, the technical term that our broker dealer would have tech. They could have fired us for that. We'd probably get warned and then fired. And the other thing I realized is being an advisor and even today, it always surprises me, Greg, how many people when they leave their job, right? Like we all know, we've all changed jobs, right? Either you decide you're going to quit and move on to a better job. You get a better offer. You get laid off, you get fired or whatever it might be. Everybody has the same routine. You go to your, your desk with a box, you pack everything up, the pictures of your family, the pencil, the swing line stapler, you put them in the box, you carry it, a couple of high fives, say goodbye to some people, flip some people off on the way out, and you walk out the door and you go to your new office. So if that's what we do when we leave or change jobs, why is it that so many people leave one of the most valuable things in that office, they leave their money? They leave their money that they have been saving in their 401k at their old employer, and they think nothing's wrong with that. You literally packed your family belongings, you've packed your pictures of your, your kids and the swing line stapler, but you left the money in your 401k. You have no control over that. If they decide to switch 401k providers, you, you're going along for the ride, whether you like it or not. The fees are substantially higher in most 401ks than they are in IRAs or self-directed IRAs. You just don't know that because you don't read the prospectus. Greg, I mean, how many people that you talk to actually, well, I don't even think they mail the prospectuses, but for some of you that are older like I am, you remember those prospectuses that got mailed every quarter? They're about yay thick. How many of you actually read those to understand what the fees were of that 401k and the different investments? Most people don't. They're just emailed to you today and you just click delete. In there tells the true story. And you can just go to the, um, I can't remember, it's a government site that actually spells this all out, how much money you're losing to fees in 401ks. And they're all hidden buried fees because they're just cumulative amongst all the participants. It just surprises me that people leave their money at their old employers and don't ever think anything of it until someone smacks them in the face and says, hey, move your money. Don't leave it in your old employer. Do you see that a lot? Yeah, look, I, I see it all the time. And, and what's concerning is people just are not, um, you know, you know the, you, when I say people, everyone works so hard. They're, they're spending t so much time away from their families and then for them to put away this money and then not and for the future so they don't have to work so much in the future. And then just forget about it. It's 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 crazy. And look, it happens every day. Um, I, I I meet with so many people. And let me let's preface this: what we're talking about is not for everybody. I'm not here to say that you should. You everyone here should self direct. If 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 you're one that wants to take a little bit of action, meaning you want to spend 30 minutes a month. I mean, what is that? That's is that six hours in the year? 
So 30 minutes a month, which is probably about 10 times more than you're spending right now. But if you're willing to do that much time and look at your accounts and pay attention and make a couple decisions, it is really the difference of you having hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars in your retirement account or none or very little. And it really is. I mean, if you understand the rule 72, if you understand kind of compounding interest and not paying taxes on your gains, many of you are already investing in things outside of your IRA today. Could be businesses, could be Bitcoin, could be gold and precious metals. Uh, a lot of it's, a lot of you might be doing real estate. All of those things that you're doing outside of your IRA, you can be doing inside of an IRA. There's no reason why you should be paying taxes on it. Furthermore, if you do it inside of a Roth IRA, you won't pay tax on it when it comes out either. So it's, it's, it's the, these rules, look, the rules have been set up by the wealthy. The, these rules were created by the government, by the rich, so the rich can get richer. And there's no reason why you can't also be obscenely rich. Every one of you on this call, it doesn't matter your age, 50, 60, 70, 30. God forbid those that are 20 in this call, God bless you. I hope you are because you will be obscenely rich if you just follow these rules right now. But it is not too late to start making these small changes um, that will make drastic moves for you when you go to retire. Drastic moves. And I've seen it on my own. I, I, you know, I, wherever I go now, it seems like uh, I've, I've done enough speaking where I'm talking to individuals who, look, I'll, I'll speak to a room with 100 people or 500 people. And there's like the token five, six, seven people who actually take to action what we talk about. And literally six or 12 months later, that person's told me how they've opened up a $5,000 Roth and now it's $85,000. There are, there are some rules. I'll tell you one fun rule that's new as of September of last year, you can no longer make more than um, $10 million a year in your IRA. So for those of you looking to make more than $10 million in, 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 uh, in your IRA, I'm sorry. That's a, that's a new rule. Thanks to some people that have taken advantage of the, of the rules the government has put together. And that was a joke, by the way. I didn't even see Chris smiling. So um, you, you can, was, my point is- It wasn't is really a joke to me. I'm like, wow, shit, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, you, you can actually um, make um, lots of money in your account, even if it starts at a small amount. And the example I gave you, which is an interesting one, and why there's a new rule for it, is the one of the founders of Pay, um, PayPal, um, I think his name's Peter Thiel. You can Google it later after this. Um, he, uh, he, he turned his $5,000 Roth, um, which he vested in PayPal and owned part of PayPal with his IRA, self-directed. It is worth a couple billion dollars today. So, um, so there's a new rule now. The government doesn't want that to happen anymore. They want to get their piece of the pie. So you can now only make $10 million a year. I apologize. Um, but that being the case, um, there's many, many people um, that can actually take control and start making small changes. You know, even if, to your point, Chris, as far as many of you um, that are on this um, on, on this call are are making eight, nine, ten percent, or five or six percent, um, whatever you're making, most times your advisor is making you know two, three, four, five percent. You might only see the one percent, but there's different loads and ratios, Chris. You know them way better than I do from coming from that space. Um, they get paid no matter what. And I'm not here to say that all financial advisors are bad by any means. There's great ones, but also yeah, we work with a lot um, of good ones. Yeah, there, there there is good ones. And so but this this really self-directing is for those who want to engage in business activities that are not the stock market, that want to be more in the real estate or other alternatives or in their own businesses. And what I have found, those that kind of take control of their own money make better returns. Yeah, it's it's funny, Greg. I, I remember when you know I was in in Wall Street and we did accounts, IRAs, SEP IRAs, simple IRAs. I mean, all the way up the food chain. Uh, one of the things that a lot of clients loved and also hated was the volatility of the markets. You know, they'd put money in the markets. I'll never forget two thousand eight, right after the Great Depression or Great Recession. You know, the market started coming back and a lot of people started putting money back into the markets. It would have been a great time to invest. And everybody was very skittish from 2009 up to 2011 because we just finished a complete almost collapse of the financial system. And in 2011, most people don't even remember this, but we had a lot of things. Greece was, was becoming insolvent. There was all sorts of issues in the EU. And most people right now don't even know that that happened, but I lived it. And all of a sudden, our accounts were doing really well and all this stuff happened. The markets tanked again. People freaked out. 
you know, they had made money after just losing a bunch. They were making it back, feeling better about themselves. Then all of a sudden they get slapped in the face with these things that they had no control over that the funds that they were invested in had should have never really had any impact. But you have to understand in the stock market, any mutual fund, ETF, any index you invest in, all boats rise with the tide and they almost all fall with the tide. You know, everybody's like, oh, well, I own, I own Tesla. That's going to be okay. No, it's not. Tesla in the pandemic, you, you're obviously short-sighted because in the pandemic, Tesla got walloped. It went way down. I know because I bought it. And then it came back up. So every stock, no matter how good the company is, from Apple to Amazon to, you know, if you're investing in Alibaba or any of those countries, they all get hit in recessionary periods, like the one that I think we have coming soon. So when I started, you know, listening to Greg and learning this, and I moved my 401k to a self-directed IRA, my, my wife, uh, back then she was my fiance, moved her uh, old 401k from Bank of America into a self-directed. And then what we started doing is we started becoming our own bank and we started lending that money out. Austin, I'll get to your question about what the difference is. And as we did that, one thing I noticed, and Greg, you always said this, it's just sometimes saying and hearing is different than doing. So I started doing this. And what I saw is instead of these ups and downs in the markets with, hey, maybe some of you love the thrill of the ups and downs. What I'd like is I like consistency. I like the steady return that I get. So as we started lending our money out in a first secured position, which we've been doing for goodness gracious, since 2014, we started getting set returns. And I remember I've lent money out at 9%. I've lent money out at 12%. And my wife even just did a deal at 15%. Every month, those checks come in. And every month, it's the same return. I don't have any variations. When the markets are up, I'm not seeing the big ups, but the, when the markets are down, it's just another day for me. Nothing changes. The check still shows up, gets deposited into my IRA, and I make my flat nine to 12%. It's just, I sleep better at night. My account continuously and consistently and persistently grows. And I just don't understand why more people can't just do that. I was having a conversation with my podcast guy and he was saying, ah, it's not sexy. Everybody wants 20, 30, 50% returns. Me and Greg talk about this all the time. We've been around, around, around this quite a while. When people seek unrealistic returns, remember this is a law folks. I, I am happy to send each and every single one of you that sign up for this weekend's three day event. I'll give you this, which is the, the six laws of wealth. But the, the one law, which is law number four says, Anyone that seeks unrealistic returns, their money will flee them. How many times have you seen that happen, Greg? I see it. I see it often. See, I see it, it often. often. Yeah, and I do too. When we seek unrealistic returns, our money often will flee us. Maybe not right away, but eventually because it's just the way it is. A consistent, steady return. And I remember Greg sitting up at front at our mastermind talking about this. And, you know, everybody's kind of bored until he drops the hammer and he says, you know, my small little consistent returns that I get, I get them when the whole market tanks. In your IRA, in your 401k that your advisor so you know diligently manages, you have to remember when the markets tank, your account tanks as well, but your advisor still gets paid. So our accounts don't tank. Our accounts just keep going steady as it, it, is, it is. And I just can't understand why people don't understand that or don't want that. But because some people are always seeking those unrealistic returns in a self-directed IRA, you could use it for that. I mean, you could take your money in your IRA and invest in the next Uber. You could invest in a, in a company called Private Money Club, which could be the next big software platform. But no one knows. It's a risk. But what if it is? And what if you were you know, invested in that company? What if you were invested in, uh, gosh, what's another new company that just went off crazy uh, there's so many of them. Zoom. What if you were invested in Zoom, one of the founders, and your money that was in Zoom was through your self-directed IRA, and then all of a sudden the pandemic hits and Zoom becomes one of the most popular things everybody uses. Do you think your IRA would benefit? And the other thing too, Greg, I, I want to hit on is, I think, how many real estate investors do we have on here? Say I. If we can get a gauge of how many real estate investors specifically, how about wholesalers? Do we have any wholesalers on here? Because I think one of the greatest things that I've learned about with self-directed is how wholesalers use it for the, the earnest money deposit. And then they have these huge returns, especially now. So we got a bunch of people on here wholesaling. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that can really benefit people if they had money in a self-directed Roth IRA? Sure. Yeah. And also, I saw one of the comments earlier, and I forgot. I wanted to at least comment on it. It is $10 million in your IRA lifetime, not per year. 
Um, although I still think that's not too bad. So if any of you hit that $10 million limit, that's not a terrible thing. A good catch on that. I did think I did say every year. Although after $2 million, if you make that in a year, you get audited um, um, if you make that much in a year. So again, good problems uh, for sure. Um, as far as, as, as wholesaling, we've had, um, I've had a, a lot of people. My background is real estate. So I have focused on real estate. I would say um, majority of our clients at our trust company actually do real estate probably 60% or more, um, it, you know, something about collateral and uh, something about, uh, you know, just owning, owning a piece of property that you, you know, have options um, that create income are, have been really good to me in the past. And so that's, that's where I focus. But that being said, um, wholesaling, what I've seen with some people do with their self-directed IRA is if you're a wholesaler and let's say you're doing, I don't know, five, 10, 15, a hundred deals a year, Take one or two or three deals a year and, and do it through your IRA. Let me give you the example. So right now, if Chris Nago were to wholesale, you know, 10 deals every month, but one of those deals, rather than his LLC or him personally is on the contract to wholesale that deal, have his IRA. So Horizon Trust Company, FBO, Chris Noggle. So his IRA would be on the contract and put down the deposit or earnest money on that deal. So let's say you put $5,000 down from his Roth IRA um, as the owner of the contract on that, um, on that, um, on that um, asset and to wholesale. When he wholesales it 60, 30, 90 days later and sells it to somebody else and that $5,000 turns into $25,000, the full $25,000 goes back to Chris Noggle's IRA and not to his LLC or to him personally, therefore avoiding 100% of the taxes. He'll avoid all the taxes 100%. So, so I have guys that typically do like two or three different deals uh, a year, um, sometimes you know, a couple more than that, but they turn their $5,000 Roth IRA into you know, an $85,000 uh, IRA in, in one year. You can't do every deal in there. There's definitely some rules about that. Sorry, I'm changing my location here. I'm walking and talking. Um, I'm, I'm out of town right now, so I'm in a louder place. Um, so, so that being said, uh, you know, anybody can wholesale, you can, you know, what I recommend is doing what you understand the most. So when it comes to like Bitcoin and, and maybe you understand Bitcoin really well, huh? and you know, there, there, there are people out there, but if that is the case, if, if you don't know it very well, then do what you know really well on real estate and then do a small portion in new businesses or a small portion in Bitcoin, et cetera. And so that's what I do. I, I'll, I'll put five or $10,000 from my Roth IRA, self-directed IRA into a new business opportunity. And it might do a zero. I might lose it or it might, you know, I might double it or triple it. But then I do majority of my money in real estate, um, typically in, in, in a passive kind of environment that I understand. That's yeah. So I think that's a great strategy. And, you know, the other thing too, that's really nice is, you know, on here, we've got about uh, almost 200 people. And I guarantee you, if we did a poll of all 200 of the people that are on here, some of them have money, okay, and some of them need money. There's usually only two types of people, people that have money that want to make money and people that need money to make money. Now, can you imagine if everybody on here was at a networking event and they all exchanged numbers and they each came up with an idea that, hey, I've got a self-directed IRA that I'm going to start. And another person said, I've got a self-directed IRA I'm going to start. Then they just banded together and they decided, all right, I'll lend on your deals. You lend on my deals. And you, you, you all created this little pact where each of you lend on each other's deals because you have a relationship built. You trust the person. You know that they're a good investor with real estate or anything else that they're doing. Like that's how this group could be. You have 200 people that probably either have money or need money. And you, if you have a Fidelity, a Schwab, or I could go through the whole lineup of any of those IRAs, don't let them lie to you and say that they are self-directed. I know Fidelity did a big marketing thing saying that they had a self-directed IRA. They do not. The, the, the self-directed IRA they're talking about is they allow you to invest in the universe of investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and that's about it. You can't take your Fidelity self-directed IRA and go out there and lend money to Greg for his next real estate deal or lend money to someone else for whatever you want. You just can't do that. They're going to say, no, 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 you can self-direct into any investment that we offer on, on this platform. 
there's a big difference. A self-directed IRA custodian like Horizon Trust that Greg owns is one that allows you to invest in pretty much the entire universe of anything you want to invest in. Hell, I always tell the example of you could buy a dairy cow, go milk the dairy, buy it with your IRA, milk the dairy cow, take the proceeds from selling that milk and put it back in your IRA. I mean, technically, I mean, not saying any of you should do that. You technically could kind of do that. I think there's better ways to well, make technically it. you need to hire someone to do to, I mean, technically to hire someone to milk the actual cow. But yes, you can do all that. You shouldn't be the one milking the cow because there could be a technical tax problem there. But um, since you were getting technical, I figured I'd clarify that. <laughs> all right. So one thing you got to add to the cow scenario is you got to just hire your neighbor to come over and milk the cow every morning, which might not be a bad Correct. idea to get to sleep in a little bit. <laughs> or your fiance. Yeah. And the other thing too, with any of your IRAs, your 401ks, I mean, we talked about Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of the cryptos, like how many of you can actually buy Bitcoin inside of your 401k? The answer is none of you. Now, on rare occasions, we find that one person has an IRA and they say, well, no, I can buy an ETF that has Bitcoin in it. No, it isn't. It's a, you're not buying direct Bitcoin. And there's a lot of gold funds out there. You're not directly buying gold. You're buying futures or some derivative of that particular commodity or that particular coin. It's not the actual coin. And last time I checked, if I'm going to invest in crypto, I want to actually buy the coin. I don't want a future or a derivative of that. So a self-directed IRA allows you to invest directly in physical gold, physical silver, any precious metals. You can physically buy Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of the, the altcoins that you want to buy. You can lend money to your neighbor for the next real estate deal if they're viable and a good, inve a good you know, investor. There's really nothing you can't do, but these are all things that you certainly can't do with your 401k or with your existing IRA. And that's the thing, I just don't understand why more people don't know about this. But then when you think about it, the reason is nobody's telling them about it because nobody can make money with it. One other, we yep. have, and, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, we had a good question over here. I just wanna go, but finish with your sentence and then I'll, I'll throw the question out there. Yeah, I was just gonna say when, when, when you're buying, um, you know, um, precious metals or real estate or whatever it may be. I think what's unique about what we've created and, and I know Chris has worked closely with us and on trying to have the best client experience, but we, we will hold your hand through the process. So, so if you have interest in one of those things, you're just not quite sure how to do it. I want to put you at ease right away. That was like the number one thing that I struggled with. Um, when I first got started in the space was, I mean, there's so many questions on the application, you know, it's asking for this certain documentation. What does that even mean? We will hold your hand and make it super seamless for you. And, 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 and then Chris has helped with that too. Chris has been a client for a long time and he's helped me want to, you know, tweak certain things to make it better and better and more customer friendly. We want to give you, provide you the best service, but also just to make it seamless. Um, and, and, and just so you know, I think a lot of places when you start moving, uh, I guess, let me let me uh, state this. If, if you have an IRA or old 401k from a previous employer, if you like this idea of self-directing, you don't have to do all of it. If you've got $100,000 of fidelity, you can move over $50,000. You can have both accounts. In fact, I encourage it. I encourage you to see, and, and I've, I've done this with my financial advisor for years, where we compete. Who did better in the last year? Who made the better return? And so you can leave some there. You can kind of ease into it. It's not an all or nothing kind of thing. And for those of you on here that have not set up a retirement account, then it's obviously super easy. You can set up a, a Roth or IRA account from day one. Um, very, very simple uh, to work with um, and very easy to do. And, and we kind of, it's a, a very a short conversation we typically have with you over the phone to kind of get things going. So go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Well, actually, I just want to elaborate on that. A lot of people think this is complicated. Oh, if I have an old IRA or I want to set up one of these, is it, is it complicated? No, it's a phone call literally a phone call and a signature, which most of it is done through DocuSign nowadays. It's that simple. The Horizon Trust and the team, Brandy specifically, and I know Brandy's on here, will hold your hand and help you with all the paperwork. That's the thing that people get confused about. Nobody likes paperwork. Nobody wants to deal with that. They don't want to make you know calls to their old uh, employer 401k. They just want somebody else to do it. And that's exactly what this team does. And then once the money comes over to the, uh, the self-directed IRA, 
Then we have the money movement team, which Andrew does. He'll do a call with you, find out what it is, that, like, what is it that you really like to invest in? Because I'll tell you, one of the laws of wealth law number three says protect your wealth. And that means invest in things you know, like, and understand. Maybe you love real estate. Maybe you love crypto. Maybe you love gold and silver. Maybe you love stocks. We got to figure out what it is that you know, like, and understand. And that's what the mapping team does. They will figure that out. And then they will guide you into the best way for you to help self-direct your funds into that while literally holding your hand. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Short of, you know, like, hey, take all my money and put it where you think you should, which is the biggest mistake you'll ever make because you're, you're giving up control of your money. We are going to basically help guide you through this entire process. That's the, the best part about this is all you need to do is decide you want to change where your money is held so that you're in control of it. One other thing, too, somebody asked here, they said, um, <laughs> And this, this comes up a lot. Mike said, I have a rollover IRA, which just means it was an IRA that was rolled over from another uh, custodial plan. And he says, how do I change it to a self-directed IRA? So Mike, we kind of just hit that. You get on the phone with us and we'll have Stephen put up the link so you can do that. And we're going to be doing an entire training on this, on some advanced techniques with self-directed IRAs this weekend at the three-day Money School Essentials. Uh, Greg's going to be back. We're really going get, to be getting into you know, case studies and showing real scenarios of how other people have used this and what this has meant for them and how it's completely changed their financial futures. So you know, we'll put the link up so you can set up a call if you want to talk about how it works, but it is the very, very simple. The other thing too, Greg, I think people get their, their head wrapped around is they start thinking, oh, well, if I have to self-direct this and I've got to figure out where this money's going to go, that sounds complicated. My answer to that is always, yeah, you know, when uh, you first learned how to drive and your parents gave you the keys to the car, weren't you nervous? When you got in that driver's seat, you buckled the seatbelt and you had to learn how to drive with your parents sitting next to you. That was an uncomfortable feeling. It was a new feeling, but it didn't take any of us very long to be like, I got this, you know, and then you all of a sudden figured out how to go faster how to, I don't know, when you were, when I was a kid, I found out how to do a lot of things very quick, but you, you get comfortable with it after just doing it. Nothing's easy if you don't apply the knowledge and do it. This self-directing, it's super easy. And, and Greg, if you don't mind, I'm just going to, can everybody see me? Okay. I want to show you, this is a deal I just did for Larissa, um, or I should say Larissa just did it. She knows how to do these. So this is, this is the deal here. We got a deal for a house. Okay. That we wanted to lend on. So somebody sent the deal over to us. We analyzed it and there's software that we have that will analyze it all for you. Larissa said, yeah, I want to lend on that deal. Great. So what we then did is we went with, we, she got a hold of Brandy with an email. Brandy then sent over and you can just go to Horizon Trust. It's called the Direction to Invest. Larissa, and you can see this is all her information. I shouldn't probably show her account number, but you know her name, her date of birth and all this stuff and the address that she's lending on. It's a promissory note. It's three pages. That was it. This is what Larissa had to fill out. This is how complicated this is. She had to fill three pages out. This one, she didn't have to do anything. She just attached the escrow agent's information, which is either a title company or an attorney. And then she signed the last page. Boom, that's it. Everything else that had to be done was a promissory note, okay, which the borrower sent her right here. This is from the attorney saying that she's going to earn 12% on her $25,000 loan, which works out to be, there's a dollar amount on here somewhere whatever, $250 a month. And then the attorney sent Larissa over the mortgage. And all the mortgage is, is just the security instrument. This is what you really want. So we had a note created by the borrower's attorney. We had the mortgage created by the attorney. So no, no heavy lifting for Larissa. She's just being a mom. And the only thing she had to do is a three-page direction to invest form, one signature and some basic information. And then Horizon Trust and Brandy took care of the rest. This deal is now funded. $250 checks are going into her account every month and she's making 12%. How hard was that? Driving- I mean, the hardest, the hardest part you said there was just being a mom, just to be clear. <laughs> For sure the hardest part about that is- <laughs> But I mean, some people make this out to be way more complicated. That's all there is to it. Like she didn't have to do anything besides the direction to invest. The rest was all done by third parties in, in that now she's making 12% of her money. And it's not 12% if the market does good. It's not 12% if the economic report comes out good, if the jobless claims comes out good, if inflation is under control, it's 12%. That's it. And if the person doesn't pay her, guess what? We have a really sweet house 
that Larissa would love to sink her teeth in that we get to take back. That's it. That's how that works. That was a small loan, 25 grand. I mean, what would that be if it was a bigger deal? And a lot of people are like, well, I don't have much money. How does Larissa move $25,000? She sometimes me and Larissa and a couple other people on private money club will come together and we'll take down one big deal. Like there's a 300 or $387,000 deal right now that four different self-directed IRAs came together and took down this one deal. There's nothing saying you can't do that. If you have friends, there's 200 of you on here, pair together, take down bigger deals, heck, take down syndications, whatever you want to do. There's no limit to what you can do. It's just how creative do you want to get? What else, Greg? What yeah, else? look, you tell uh, me. I mean, I mean, I mean, the big thing that like, I, I don't get too emotional about it when I probably should, but if you truly will just pay yourself first, start a retirement account, because usually when I'm talking to groups, there's about half the people who don't have one. So first and foremost, those who don't have one, you have to do it and pay yourself, make it an expense, make it something like, like it is your, like your car insurance or it's your health insurance. You've got to create an account now and start doing something very small with it. Um, I assure you five or 10 years from now, you will be so thank me that you've started something because most people just wait too late to do that. And for most of you, it's not too late, by the way, you, you can do this late in your, in your years it's not too late to start now. So, so that's it. And then, and then the, the second thing that we've already hit on, and, and I think we're going to do over a lot more like uh, um, case samples this weekend together when I'm speaking there, I'm going to go over some examples with you, but, but, but again, um, most people also have a retirement account that's sitting there doing nothing right now. And the, 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 for those of you that think you might want to be self-directing and invest in something that you know and or understand, um, open up your account, Get that money that's sitting there doing nothing, get it sent over and open an account over into a self-directed IRA account with us. So now it's going to be sitting there. That process takes a couple of weeks. So once it gets there, now you're looking for opportunity. So once the opportunity comes up, you're ready to make that, make that move. If you're looking for opportunities and then like, oh, I now want to use my IRA, it might be too late. Especially in today's world, opportunities kind of come and, come and go pretty quick you know, within two to four weeks. So if you can get your account set up, get your money, some of it or part of it rolled over into a self-directed IRA account. Now it's ready. Now you can take action. Your, might, your money might sit there for a month and that's okay if it's just there waiting for that opportunity. It's better for it to be there, ready to pounce on the opportunity than, it, than all of a sudden the opportunity, you know, goes by you. Absolutely. So one of the questions Kevin just said is how soon can you take withdrawals or borrow against your self-directed IRA? You're not really borrowing, you're lending. So Kevin, I think you're confusing the infinite banking concept with the self-directed IRAs. They're very similar because we're just moving money. But in this, you're not taking a loan from your IRA. You're, you're literally, think of right here. Let me use this as an example, Kevin, because this a lot of people are probably thinking that. This mortgage right here, this note in this mortgage, okay, th think of this the same way as you would a stock certificate, right? Let's say you bought Apple stock. I know in today's world, you don't actually get the paper certificates, but you, you know, just imagine that you did. This is your paper certificate. This is your security that you're investing in. Now, I know it's a loan, but same idea. Your IRA just basically holds this security right here. So you're not taking a loan from your IRA. You're literally just making an investment with your IRA. Now, that investment could be the loan to some a real estate investor on their real estate deal like Larissa did. Uh, it might be an investment into crypto. It might be an investment into, um, I don't know, somebody you know's business venture. It could be a number of different things, gold, silver. You're, you're not doing loans or withdrawals. You're doing investments. The IRA is then recognizing and realizing that this property, this note and mortgage is what it's holding as the investment. That's all. Did I say that right, Greg? And, 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 yeah, you did. I just want to also say you can, the money's available as soon as it hits our account. So if you're moving over money from your IRA, which was a question as well, from your IRA over to our trust company, it's still an IRA. It's just a self-directed IRA. But once it arrives, three days later after the funds clear, it's available. All of it's available. If you want to invest it out and lend it out on a real estate deal or whatever we're talking about, it's all available very, very quickly. Um, so in, 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 in all of it is. So there's, there's you know, it's, it's, you know, that's why we have people that will move over all of their IRA, but maybe only invest the first half right away and then the other half maybe a few months later but then it's all in one spot but you don't have to you can do a portion thereof 
And I know there's a lot of clients that I've seen that, you know, with their self-directed IRAs, they might lend a small amount of it out on private lending deals. Some of it's in crypto, they own, you know, gold in it. So you can diversify as deep and as wide as you want with your self-directed, just like you would with your, your mutual fund diversification or your, your stock diversification. You can do all of that stuff. Matter of fact, Greg, if I'm not mistaken, if you have a TD Ameritrade account, you can basically link that to your self-directed. Is that correct? Yeah. So if you want to, um, if you want to um, still invest, in, you know, in the stock market, um, we have a platform that's for self-directed people through TD Ameritrade. So you can move all your money over and then do some in that alternative space and real estate, et cetera, and then some in the market. Um, it, again, we hold your hand through the process. You can do that process with us. Um, through your self-directed IRA. Yeah. And one other thing, I'm just reading a few of these questions. A lot of people I think are, are thinking that this is something brand new. This is the same thing you have already. If you have a 401k with your employer and you have a company now, like maybe you went self-employed, you can set up a, a self-directed 401k with your company. Or if it's just you, you could set up a solo K, which means it's it's like a 401k, but for a sole operating company, if it's just you, you could set up, I mean, pretty much anything you can do or are doing now, you could do self-directed. So, you know, one of the people is just saying, so are you guys the custodian? Yeah, Greg's company, Horizon Trust, is the custodian. Do you want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, so so our company is a, a, a licensed, we're regulated by the banking division in Mexico um, uh, custodian. So we're not a fiduciary. We're not the ones making the decisions on where you invest. Uh, I did see a question too that came through, you know, what's the minimum to start with? Um, we recommend the minimum to start with is at least five thousand dollars if you're starting a new, a brand new account. Um, that's you know at least somewhere to start with. Um, but no, our company, look, we've been we've been in business for almost twelve years now. Um, we're audited, but you know, and we got you know we're licensed, etc. And um, you know, your money while it sits with us is is secured, FDIC insured, while it sits and not invested. Obviously, once you move the money into a transaction, it is now no longer underneath our custodianship. Um, at our banks. And so therefore, uh, you know, it's now in your investment and, and whatever risk associated there is with that. Um, but look, we've got thousands and thousands of clients. Um, we've been doing this for a very long time. Um, and, and we're still a small company. Um, but that's, I think that's what's unique about us. I love that we know our clients. We're a boutique firm, a hands-on firm, where you, you, get, you can talk to me if you want to talk to me. Um, you, my staff is very versed in this and we care about your success. We care about you achieving what you're looking for. I will also say one thing, no one likes to talk about it, but I don't think it's really a big deal is there are a few things you can't invest in, cannot. And, and some of those things, uh, the, the quick things are, you know, you can't invest in life insurance um, and you also can't invest in NT, uh, collectibles like NFTs either. And then also the, the big one is real estate that is a home that you're living in. You can't invest in a vacation property or a personal property that you're living in. If it's obviously an investment property, no problem. Um, but so, so almost everything is fair game. And, and we'll help you and walk you through that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And um, a lot of people here are at, oh, this is a good question. Can you do HSA accounts? Can you do, actually self-direct an HSA account? You can self-direct in the health savings accounts, correct. Yeah, we, we do those. Um, we do, um, you know, the gold stuff, we do Roths, um, for those of you who want to open up a 401k, so okay, like Chris said, we've got a lot of clients that do that checkbook LLC kind of accounts. So again, we don't want to get dive too deep, um, into the specific accounts. What's best is you do a call with our team. Uh, we find out kind of what you're looking to accomplish, how old you are, what kind of accounts best for you. Um, if you're transferring over funds, rolling them over to us. And then we'll help you kind of decide which account is best for you. And, and when the money rolls over, there's no taxes. So if you got a $50,000 IRA or old 401k, it rolls over tax-free into your account with us. And then from there, you invest in it. And any gains that you make from that investment go back into your retirement account. Yeah. And folks, I'm just going to use this as an opportunity real quick just to talk about this weekend. So many of you have already heard about this, but this weekend we've got our three-day essentials virtual training, which is going to go deep into everything. So day one, I'm going to lay out exactly what's going on in the economy, in the markets. If any of you heard the five and the 30-year treasury bond yields just inverted, and then just yesterday, the two and the 10-year treasury bonds inverted. Most of you are like, yeah, so what? Do you know what that means? 
That means that a recession is imminent. I think it's 20 out of 26 other times this has happened, 22 of those followed or were followed by a recession. So listen, like that telltale sign that we are coming up on a recessionary period just happened, folks. It's time to wake up. It's time to start looking out the front windshield. And it's time to learn, like, if this is what's happened in the past and this is where we're at, what do you have to do now to get ready so that you don't ride the roller coaster down? And maybe some of you are too young to even remember 08 or 2000 or the early 2000 dot com crash. It sucks. You don't want to be caught on that. Greg, myself, Stephen, and many of you on here have ridden through those recessions and lost everything. Please don't be one of them that just buries your head in the sand and sits and waits. Join us this weekend for the three-day training where we're literally going to dissect what to do, not just what's going on. Hey, anyone can say, hey, a recession's coming. Okay, great. What do I do? Oh, I don't know. You know, We're going to literally say step one, step two, step three, and we're not going to just pretend all of you are the same. Some of you have higher risk tolerances. Some of you are like, I can't lose a penny. I'm going to lay out a whole bunch of different ways that you can beat the recession, get ahead in the recession, and literally have the recession become your little bitch, excuse my language, but where you're going to see this <laughs> as the biggest opportunity of your lifetime instead of something that you're scared of. I want you to make money in this recession, and it is very easy to do if you're ready. But if you don't show up this weekend, I can tell you, you're probably not going to be ready. And I'm not just trying to get you to sign up for the training. We're actually going to give you a hundred dollar off code to show up. The, the training is only $297. So it's only 197, but you got to sign up today because 197 isn't what we're marketing out there. It's 297. You're getting it offered at 197 because you're here and it's three days. It's all recorded because I know some of you already, I got a wedding to go to. My kids have baseball. I, I hear it every time. We record it all, folks. And then Shauna edits it, timestamps it. So you can literally, if all you want to learn about is self-directed IRAs, great. It's timestamped. You just go right to that training and you watch that. And they're like, oh, that was cool. Maybe I want to learn about the infinite banking concept. Great. That's timestamped. We've done this a few times, folks. And a lot of you are probably thinking, but I've already been to a three-day. Every single three day we do is completely different, different speakers, different topics, because times change. So don't you think the training should change? This one will be totally different than the last one and very different than any other ones prior to that. So the links up there, folks, join us this weekend. It's literally $197, which is peanuts for what this will save you and teach you how to make a stupid amount of money in a time when everybody else is losing. If that doesn't sound exciting, well, you joined on the wrong day. I swear. I, Cause like if I were in any one of your shoes, I'd be there. Or if I couldn't be there, I'd watch the recordings. It's just how we all do things. So join us for that three day, but Greg, if you, if you don't mind, let's, let's spend the last couple minutes we have with you answering some of these questions. So Colleen said, is, is it either or, so in other words, we have a self-directed IRA, but can we also do a SEP or a UNIK? Any advantages, disadvantages, especially tax impact? So this is somebody that already has a self-directed, but they're wondering, can they do a SEP or a solo K? Um, the, the, the quick answer, well, there isn't a, I don't think there is a quick answer. I'd prefer doing a consultation with it was a Colleen because yep. um, it goes back a little bit to what um, you know her, her job if she has, a, if she's W two employee, how much money she's making, how much she's already putting away. There's certain rules on which accounts she can have, and so uh, I can't give her the exact answer without knowing more about her. And so, uh, just let's do it. Let's do a consultation. But that there's there is a likelihood that you can open up an additional um, an additional retirement account. Yes, absolutely. All right, Colleen. So let's set up a call. I just put the link in there. Uh, JF said, "Are there taxes, fees?" to change your 401k or I or, or your 401k to a self-directed I. So they're basically just saying, does the custodian charge money to transfer money over? No, there's no fees for that. I mean, I, I shouldn't say there, I would say 90% of the time there's no fees. Sometimes some companies have a fee, like if it's an annuity or something that's coming from somewhere, but typically stock market, there's, you know, there's, there's very little, if any fees that could come over. Um, and then by the way, I, I don't know if anyone's, I, I think someone's probably asked it, but um, even on our side, we'll go through our fees, but our fees are less, you know, they're 1% the most you would ever pay. And it goes down the, the bigger your account, the smaller the fee. Um, you probably don't hear that often, but that is the case with us. So it goes anywhere from 1% all the way down to about 30 basis points, which is a third of, a, of 1%. And so that's, that's our fee. 
Um, and, um, you know, so it's typically half or less, more than half of what you're paying right now. Yeah. And most managed funds, managed accounts out there, or SMA accounts are charging 1.5. I've seen as high as 2%. And that's just the manager's fee. On top of that, you're going to pay expense fees for ETFs or mutual funds, 12B1 fees for mutual funds. There's all sorts of buried fees. You're not going to have that in the self-directed. So it's 1% or lower. And the thing Greg didn't talk about that's, that's brand new uh, that we, we worked on is that 1% fee is all-inclusive. So it includes all of the extra stuff that you would normally have paid for individually and that the competitors normally would charge, like Nick, we call them nickel and dime charges. That's all wrapped into that all-inclusive 1% or lower, depending on the account value. Yeah, I mean, that it might not sound like a big deal to you, but to our current clients, we actually just changed that first this year. They love it because you can call and ask us to wire something for you every week. There's no wire fees. There's no mailing fees. There's no buy and sell transactional fees. Um, which a lot of companies do. So we're pretty proud of that. Awesome. Austin, I'm going to, I'm going to explain more of the self-directed IRA and the infinite banking system as soon as, you know, Greg jumps off. So I will hit that for you, bud. Uh, we already talked about the fact that Horizon is the custodian and the fees we just went over. Is there a fee when you do a loan from the, okay, so we just hit that, uh, Justin. So the, the fees, all those fees are all inclusive in that, that wrap, that 1% or lower asset charge that's on it. Uh, Anonymous said, if I have both traditional and Roth self-directed IRAs with, with Horizon Trust, can I start converting the remaining traditional to a Roth in lump sums over the next several years to ease the tax burden? Burden. What is your process? That's a brilliant question right there. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the answer is yes. Um, uh, we, we can, you can move it over. You don't have to move it all over at the same time. So you can do it in chunks and get it over and pay the taxes from your account. Uh, it's called, it, you know, it's a Roth conversion um, and we can, you can do it um, in segments. And so, so yeah, you can do that. There's ways of doing that. Yes. Great. Uh, Mary Wells over in the chat said, uh, so you're licensed in Mexico. What regulations do you work under? I think you already said that that's the banking regulation, right? Yeah, we're, we're licensed underneath the banking, um, uh, banking division of New Mexico uh, under the finance department. So. Yep. All right. So Julie said, what's the cost when you, do you pull it? Uh, I don't quite any charges. So we already hit the charges. I think that's what you're asking, Julie. If you could reframe that question, I can answer that better. I just don't understand it. William said, I'm 67 years old and retired. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, am I allowed to transfer funds from my com company sponsored 401k to a self-directed IRA? Yes, um, that, that we can help you with that. Typically what we need to do uh, well, I, look, there's always some companies or caveats to that, but 99% of the companies allow you to do that. So it's a quick phone call, set up an appointment, not a problem at all. It's just, just um, we would need a copy of your statement and then we could call that um, um, plan provider with you and, and we'd ask the questions. It'd be a five minute phone call, find out what that is and, and the process and get their forms and help you fill them out and get them back to them. Right. And also, Greg, one thing that we didn't hit, but somebody had a, a comment earlier, uh, if they're over 70 and a half, does Horizon Trust aid and help with the required minimum distributions? Yeah, we do. Um, we can tell you what the RMD is for you with your account with us. We can't tell you your total amount if you have other retirement accounts elsewhere, um, obviously. So typically what we, we recommend is obviously is asking your accountant or, or CPA to help with that. Oh, these are great questions. Justin said, I have a profit sharing 401k through my corporation. Can I transfer a portion of this to a self-directed account? Uh, is he the, is, if he is the owner of the plan, um, uh, then I don't think you can, unless you move the whole pension plan yeah, over. Sure. So, so I don't think you can move a portion. Yeah, but, but I'm, I am not certain of that, but, but I can check. But I, I'm like 99% sure, because I know when I was you know, doing this as an advisor, you, you'd have to move the whole plan. You can't just half the plan or do a small portion. Um, there, there are some things like in-service, non-hardship withdrawals uh, or rollovers. So you know, if you were a participant in the plan, in your own plan, and your plans, the plan document of your plan allows you to do in-service non-hardship rollovers, then you could roll over to a self-directed IRA and then self-directed portion. And it's kind of cool, Justin, because if you own the plan, if you're the owner, 
you can kind of control what your plan document says. You just need language in there that allows for in-service non-hardship withdrawals or rollovers. And then you very well might be able to move a piece of yours out. Man, there's some technical questions. I'm impressed. This I mean, good. I did this for 16 <laughs> years. So I was just like, well, there's a, there is a way to do it. You know, we did that for so well, no, I'm, I'm not as impressed with you. I'm more impressed with the questions. The questions no, are freaking awesome. <laughs> don't, time don't, time. don't be I'm impressed with me. I don't know time. anything. There's a weatherman on here who, who <laughs> seems to know far more than I do on this stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm giving you a hard time. I'm always impressed with you. And I will. <laughs> All right. Carol said, so can I move from an IRA to Horizon? Yeah, that's an easy one. Absolutely. Let's see. Firing through these. JF said, are there taxes, fees to change your, okay, we already hit that one, Jeff. Um, usually there's no taxes or fees. If you roll over your old 401k or old IRA to a self-directed IRA, it depends on who the money's with. But uh, Greg, I haven't really seen that in a long time where they charge a fee to move it over. I remember um, Prudential used to have like a, an asset, like closeout fee. And then I think they got sued or enough people complained, they got rid of it. Um, I'm going to butcher your name. I can't really say it. So we're just going to call you SV. Uh, it said, you said minimum for self-directed account is 5,000. Are there deals for 5,000 or 10,000? So there's really not a minimum for the self-directed IRA account. There, there, there's, there is no minimum. I just, you know, I think I, I read the question as, you know, what is the minimum in general? And, and I would just say for, I recommend it to get started in a self-directed IRA, you should start with 5,000. Save up 5,000 and start with that. Um, but that being said, um, oh, sorry, here I lost. You there? Yep, yep, we got oh, you. Yeah. Okay. What was uh, I'm sorry. What was the other question? Um, well, they were just question. asking about um, you know other deals for five thousand. I mean, you could certainly buy gold and silver with five. Oh yeah, gold, silver, crypto. bitcoins. You can wholesale real estate deal. It's just hard to lend. You can't really lend. Yeah, so. I, I would say if you're going to be a private lender on something like Private Money Club. You'd want at least ten thousand to be to be you know in the game with that. Otherwise, it's just yeah. very hard to place that. Yeah. All right. Deanna said, "Is there anything for Canadians? Our Canadians get shit on." RSPs. Um, <laughs> those are those plans are harder. Those RSPs up in Canada. I tried to break into Canada on these, and they're much more difficult. So, I'm sorry. Different no. regulations. Different regulations. Uh, Jay said, can I move my current active 401? Oh, this is important. Current active 401k to a self-directed IRA and still have my employer matched. Do you want me to hit that one, Greg? Um, uh, go, well, yeah. I mean, the, the quick answer is no, you cannot. If you're currently active, you cannot move over your 401k. If you um, have something from a previous employer, you absolutely can. So. Okay. And then Jay, just the addition to what Greg just said is the only way you'd be able to do that if you're an active participant in a 401k at your employer is normally if you're over 50 years old and they allow for in-service non-hardship withdrawals. If they allow for in-service non-hardship withdrawals, that means they will allow you to move a large portion or sometimes they restrict it to 50% of your current 401k into your own IRA, which could be a self-directed IRA still then allowing you to contribute to the, the plan that you're in now, the 401k and receive the match on that. So that would be your only way. Jay, the advice I'd give you is check with your plan participant, uh, you know, whoever runs the 401k and ask them if they allow for in-service non-hardship withdrawals. And if they do, it's, it's game on for you. If they don't, uh, you know, just got to get you to retire a little early. Hey, yeah. Chris, I, I think I'm going to bounce off here. If that's okay. okay. I got, yeah, we can get the rest of these. There's, there's a ton of but, questions but coming in. I look forward to I'm going to be around also um, for the three day Friday. I know I'll be around. I'm looking really looking forward to it. So we can kind of dive deeper into um, more examples and case studies and questions and stuff. So really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for listening and be part. I'll let you, Chris, I'll let you do your thing and wrap it up. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, Greg. Hey, Greg. All right, everybody. Thanks, we're going to, we're going to keep going with some of these questions. And I, I am, and Stephen is, I see him laughing at some of the questions and comments, but we are thoroughly impressed with these, these comments and questions coming in. It's amazing. Uh, what is the difference between self-directed versus infinite banking? So let me hit that one real quick. Um, so this is Austin asked this question. A, the infinite banking concept is a process. It's a process of taking back the banking functions in your life. The infinite banking concept is usually worked or used with the machine being a specially designed and engineered whole life. We're going to go deep, 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 deep 
into this on the three day training. So I'm not going to get into the infinite banking concept or what it is, but let's just kind of draw the line in the sand for what is the difference between a self directed IRA and BYOB with a, with your self directed IRA or the infinite banking concept or what we commonly call become your own banker with the special designed whole life. The line in the sand is one thing. The self directed IRAs are deemed qualified money, which is retirement dollars that fall under the IRS. Uh, guidelines and all the IRS rules where 59 and a half, if you take the money out pre 59 and a half, there's an early penalty and all those things. On the other side, the non-qualified side over on there, that is your savings account money, the money in your regular brokerage account. There is no rules by the IRS in terms of when you can use that money, how you can use it, what you can take it out for, what, the, you know, there's taxes if you make money, but th that's the line in the sand, um, Austin. And I hope that helps. One is qualified retirement funds. One is non-qualified funds. Stephen, anything you want to add to that one? No, you're spot on. I mean, that's that's it. And, you know, Sean says it very easy. Just think of IBC as profits and stuff you can use right now in your daily life, money you're making from that. And the self-directed IRA money is money you're going to live on, the profits you're going to live on later on with retirement. Awesome. So just real quick, before I keep going with some of these questions, how many of you are actually coming to the three-day training? Put I in the chat. I want to know, just get a gauge. How many of you are going to be at the three-day training this weekend to learn from myself, Stephen, uh, all of our mentors, Spencer Montgomery, if you're into crypto, Greg Hurling, if you want to really see some serious case studies. We went through some things today, but we're going deep there. Or if you just want to see step by step by step how you actually get ready for this I, I hate to say it, this coming recession, because now we've got this, I don't want to call it the iron cross, but we know it's coming. The inverted yield curves are a telltale. You guys can look it up. Don't believe me. Google it. And then you tell me what the probability of a recession coming is. And I bet you any money you're going to want to be at this three day. So a whole bunch of you just said, I make sure if you have not yet gotten your ticket for the event, you use the link that Stephen's going to put up right now, because that's the only way you're going to get into the three day with a hundred dollars off. If you don't do that today, this is the last preview event we're doing for it. You're going to pay two ninety seven, dollars or you're going to wish you could have been there. And I hate it when people say, I should have, I could have, I would have. Don't be that person. I should have went, but I could have went, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, buts are little three eyed animals in the woods. Don't use three eyed animals in the woods as your excuse for not being at the three day. I don't know where that came from, but whatever. Sounded cute. I want to, Chris, um, let me answer one question. So Austin was saying, so if, he, if it's my current employer, I have to do the infinite banking and not the self-directed IRA. And Sean has said, that's right, but that's not hundred percent right. So I just want to clarify. So you can have a 401k and a self-directed IRA. You just can't roll the money from the existing 401k into the IRA. So you can have both. So if you want to self-direct and start building a Roth IRA or something like that, absolutely, you can do that. So just want to clarify that. I saw in the comments real quick. Yeah. And then also Mary Wells keeps hitting with caps. Mary, turn your, your cap lock off. It seems like you're angry with us. Um, you, you're asking, what is it? The, the email address? Are you looking for the email address to set up a call to ask about the banking regulation where you can look that up? I mean, that's public knowledge. You should just be able to punch in horizon trust and then just put in, uh, you know, banking regulation or something like that. I'm happy to give you Brandy's email as well, or Greg's email. Either She's way. looking for mine. Oh, she, okay. Okay. Sorry, Mary. Um, yeah. I just, I know oh, when right. I send messages, my wife always yells at me if I have any caps in there. Cause she's like, people think you're yelling at her or, or yelling at them. And, and I'm seeing your emails and I'm like, or your messages. I'm like, are you yelling at us? <laughs> I know you're not Mary, but just uh, tone it down a bit. Anyway, I'm kidding. All right. Catherine said in a question, she said, would I contact Horizon or Money School to get out of my REIT and dumb annuity? Oh God, those annuity things. <laughs> Yeah, Mary, probably just set up a call. Um, I'll have Shauna post it again. Uh, just set up a call with one of us here at Money School. We can analyze like what that dumb annuity, because most dumb annuities are dumb, what it looks like if you're in surrender charges, if you, you know, where you're at with that. We'll take a look at that. So Catherine, we got your back. We'll take a look at each one of those in the REIT. Is it a publicly traded REIT or is it a private REIT? That will matter. A lot of the private REITs right now have no liquidity, uh, which is a scary thought, but uh, we can look at all that and give you an answer on it. So just set up a call uh, with that link that's in getting put up right now. 
Uh, let's see here. Continuing on. Are, are these help? Are these helpful going through the uh, the questions and, ans and getting answers? Because a lot of you have questions up here. I just want to make sure this is helpful. Just give me a big I or A Y E if you like the question. Okay, perfect. Very helpful. Mark said, forgive my ignorance. No such thing as ignorance, Mark. We're all here to learn. But I had a friend of mine say that he makes too much income to have a Roth IRA. Is this accurate? Oh, wow. That's, that is a great question. And the answer is yes, Mark. There is an income phase out. Imagine that. You know, anything really, really good for us when it comes to taxes, there's always some ca like catch, right? The IRS and the government always puts a catch on. I don't remember exactly what the threshold is, Mark but there is an income phase out limit for Roth IRAs. And it depends on if you're a single filer or a joint filer or a head of household, uh, you could Google that, put in Roth IRA, just go to Google, put in Roth IRA income limits. And if I'm not mistaken, Stephen, it's like 123,000 or 160, but every year that changes. That's why I'm not able to give you the- It's a bit higher. It's like 160 and 250 or something okay. like that. So there you go. Just Google it. Uh, you know, it was 2018 was the last time I really checked those numbers. All right. Uh, Justin said, yes, I own the plan. So Justin, you're, you're in a unique situation. If anyone remembers, Justin was asking about if he has a company that has a 401k, can he move some of his 401k into a self-directed IRA while still getting the match for his 401k? And the answer for him is actually quite simple. Yes, because he owns the company, he sets the rules. So he just needs to go to whoever the plan, uh, whoever put together the plan document, which could be a third party administrator, or maybe you got a bundled plan, like what Fidelity and Vanguard do, but just call them up and just ask them if your plan document allows for in-service non-hardship withdrawals. If it doesn't ask if you can amend it, you own the company, you own the plan, just amend the plan document to allow for in-service non-hardship withdrawals. And then it's game on for you, Justin. Hopefully that's helpful. Unanimous said, in what ways does the money school work with Horizon? That is a fantastic question. Stephen, do you want to hit that one or you want me to hit it? Yeah, no, I mean, so... That is a great question. So first off, when you have a self-directed IRA, what does that tell us? We're now self-directing our money. So we have to be educated on what we're investing in. We have to, what's the rule? What's the law, Chris? I'm sorry? What's the law for investing? For, for investing. Things that we invest in. What's the law? We have to know. We have to understand. We have to trust. Oh, the, the laws of wealth. I, I, sorry, when you said law, I'm sorry. thinking, yeah, oh, yeah. what is the IRS law? No, the, the law <laughs> of wealth is only invest in things you know, like, and understand, there or invest with somebody that has knowledge through wisdom, time, and failure. Right. All right. Sorry so we have that. to know, law, understand. Law <laughs> we have to know, understand, like. So how do you get introduced to new investments, alternative investments, things like private money lending, things like crypto investing, things like precious metals. So that's where we team up with Horizon Trust. Horizon Trust is the custodian that provides the self-directed IRAs. And then Money School is able to provide the education and the resources to allow you to be able to invest in the things that you want to invest in. So for example, we have certain packages. So if you just want to open up a self-directed IRA with Horizon Trust, um, it's $997. You, you pay that and they'll open it up. They'll transfer the money for you. It includes all the first year fees and costs and transfers and, and, and wires and everything else that happens, right? So everything for the first year. But let's say that you want to invest in real estate or you want to do some private money lending or private money borrowing with your self-directed IRA, but you don't really know exactly how to do that. Or you want to, let's say you want to buy crypto, but you're not exactly how that works. Or even gold and silver. You don't know exactly where to buy it. Where do you hold the gold and silver? What types of silver can I buy with an IRA? Because there's a lot of government regulations that surround all this stuff. So now that you have that IRA, what the hell do you do with it? It's just like with infinite banking, what we do with money multiplier. Those of you that have policies, now that you have that policy, what do you do with it? So that's why we have the mapping team. So what we do is the money school created what's called the money movement team. So we not only provide the education, the resources, the training, but we also supply the support and the mapping for you of your self-directed IRA. So that way, once you transfer $100,000 over to it, you want to do some private money lending, boom, you're right inside the private money club. It's included with with your real estate investment self-directed IRA package. Uh, so you go in the private money club, you do the loan, we map it out uh, for you, show you how the money moves and basically do it all and show you what to do. So we provide you that education and resources to be able to accomplish what you want. So that's how Horizon and Money School uh, really work together.
Yeah. For any of you that Amazing. work with the money multiplier, we have the mapping team, which is kind of your guiding light once your policy is in force. Well, we just created that for Horizon Trust and for the qualified money. It's the money movement team, because obviously the self-directed IRA, we're not mapping it. We're just helping you decide how to move it. And we do that. Like he said, we have some of the best coaches out there that will help guide you on that. We can't give you investment advice. We can't give you investment recommendations, but we certainly will provide you the tools, resources, and the platforms to do that. So that's our relationship. And that's what we put together for that. Um, Sally said, can we top up our self-directed IRAs with fresh funds over time? Yeah. Uh, so yes. if you have a self-directed IRA, you can continue to keep funding either monthly. I, do they even have, do they have a weekly option, Stephen? I can't remember. I don't think so. Monthly. Yeah, I think it's monthly. just monthly. So you could set up like a monthly recurring deposit into your, your Roth IRA, your IRA, or your solo K. Um, you can also just do lump sums. At the end of the year, you meet with your CPA and they're like, holy crap, you're going to owe a lot in taxes. Do you have an IRA? You say yes. And then they will allow you to put in the max for whatever that dollar or whatever that year allows, 6,000, 6,500, depending on catch-ups. So you sure can. Uh, Meredith said, could you please post the link again for this weekend's training? I got here late and caught the tail end of the discussion. I'll be out of town, so I may not be able to listen live, but I would love to access the recordings. You got it, Meredith. We got you covered. Uh, Carol just said, I, so she's, she's all in on that. Unanimous said, what if I want to pull money out from my 401k to fund my infinite banking plan? What are the fees to do so? So if you if it made sense and you met with your CPA or right. tax professional and they said, yes, it would make sense for you to pay the taxes on the money today and then do the infinite banking. It's not something that we normally would suggest, recommend or tell people to do just because it is going to incur some additional costs. Well, number one, if you take money out of your 401k, you already know you're going to pay tax on it. So I don't care if that's today or when you're 70 and a half and they force your hand to take money out, you're going to pay taxes. So a lot of people would argue and say, yeah, but today my taxes are lower than they're going to be at when I'm 59 and a half or 70 and a half. So you have to justify that. And that's where you use your CPA. The only other fee you're going to have to pay for taking money out of a 401k would be if you're not 59 and a half, then you're going to pay an early penalty fee, which is 10%. So the early penalty fee for taking money out of a qualified retirement plan pre 59 and a half is going to be about a 10% penalty. There are some ways around that equal and equal and um, what is that called equal something distributions, but we're not going to get in there. Just know it's going to be taxes plus an IRS penalty of 10%. You can always do a, a loan. Yeah, that's true. Unanimous. One of the things that we often uh, talk to people about is them just taking a loan from their 401k, using that to seed fund their infinite banking, and then using the money that goes out to work from the infinite banking to then pay back the loan on the 401k. Lots of different ways to do that. You're definitely going to want to set up a call with us to kind of hear some of the different strategies that our clients have used. Uh, Alejandra, did I say that right? Alejandra, I have to jump off. Uh, where can I get the link? Okay, we already put the link up. David said, so I couldn't roll my 401k into the IBC system. No, you could right. not. Uh, remember the line in the sand? So there's a big line in the sand. This side, qualified money. This side, non-qualified. So non-qualified is where the infinite banking concept. Qualified is where your self-directed IRA, your 401ks are. It's all taxes. So you definitely don't, if you cross this line, you're going to be taxed and possible penalties. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, so that's all the questions. All right, what else do we got, Stephen? Uh, does the 997 include the solo case setup? So Kevin, that's a great question. The 997 would not include the LLC for setting up the solo K, but if you bump up into the real estate package, then yes, it would be included into the real estate or the crypto packages. There's three different they already, packages. They already have an LLC though. We can set up a solo K for them. Yeah, yeah. So it's just the LLC. So if you already have an LLC, you're good to go. Then yes, the 997 would be sufficient. The only thing is if you don't have the LLC required for the solo K, we would just have to set that up, which is included in the next two packages, along with everything else you get with the coaching and the communities and everything else. I just read your comment. Thanks, Stephen. I can listen and drive on Friday. A lot of people do that. They listen in, in while they're driving. And if there's any visuals they want to see, they just go back and watch the, the three-day training after that. Uh, can you get a loan from your 401k to fund your IBC? Yes, lots of people do that. 
and then more more people are putting stuff in. Stephen, can you just toss up just a few links because we seem to be getting toss up the link for the three day. A bunch of people already said you guys are all in and you're going to join us for the three day this weekend. So we're going to put the link up one more time to get you hundred dollars off. We're also going to put the link up right now that's going to allow you to book a call with one of our money mentors to talk about the self directed IRAs, what that looks like, what your goals are, and how that could work. And then also that same link can be used. If any of you, or actually, Stephen, put your link up for the infinite banking concept. If any of you are wanting to get on the call about the infinite banking concept and you've watched the 90-minute money multiplier video, then Stephen will put his, his link up for you to schedule a call with him as well. Um, Maybe you were on last night with me. and learned Yeah, I, I, that's it. what I'm thinking. I'm thinking he did an awesome presentation last night, uh, rocked the house. People loved it. And that was all about the money multiplier and the infinite banking concept. Uh, pioneered by Mr. R. Nelson Nash. Yeah, so if you guys notice, like if you if you were with us Monday night, you know, Chris really set this up to kind of make you realize what's going on with your money, what's going on with the economy, the markets, the mindset of what it takes to be successful and really be a millionaire and, and everything that goes along with that. And then last night we started getting into, you know, the non-qualified money. So again, we keep talking about that line in the sand, right? So the non-qualified money, we're taking advantage of the infinite banking concept, being your own banker and all the, and all the advantages and benefits that go along with that. And then today we're talking about qualified money. So the other side of that line in the sand, which are the retirement accounts, so your IRAs, your floor in case and all of that. So how to kind of where's your money, how to have the mindset about your money. And then this weekend is going to teach you what now, what to do with this money, whether it's qualified money, whether it's non-qualified money, how to start growing it, how to start protecting it, how to start saving on taxes on Friday, how to beat inflation, how to start setting you and your family up for the future. So we've had a little bit of a, a, a you know, a plan behind what we've done this week. And, you know, the three-day training is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. all three days. And that's just not enough time. So that's why we spent a couple hours Monday, a couple hours today, a couple hours, uh, you know, yesterday leading up to it, because we got to fit all this stuff in. It's a lot of information. And then from there, I have a feeling you guys are all going to have a lot of questions. So then we spend lots of time on the phone with you. Hey, you learned about qualify. You learned about IBC. You learned about these different types of investments and alternate investments and ways to grow your money, ways to save on taxes. What do you want to do now? Like, let's pick one, let's pick two. So we'll talk on the phone about your strategy. What's good for you? What are some things you should jump into right now? So it doesn't just stop on Sunday either. This is ongoing training and support we're going to give to you to help you guys make sure you're on the right path forward. Yeah, it is Eastern time, Colleen, for sure. Yep. Uh, one, uh, William had a good question. He said, would it be better to put 10% plus aside to invest rather than to use a 401k? William, my answer, and you're going to get different answers from different people, depending on your needs and goals. And I'd probably better need to know what it is you're accomplishing. But if I have a decision to put 10% in a non-qualified account that I can use control and make money on today that benefits me today, or put 10% plus into a 401k where that money can't be used for five, 10, 15 years until you're 59 and a half. And then even if you use it, then you got to pay tax on it. It's a pretty easy decision, logically. I'd put the money in the account that I'm in control of, that I can determine where that money is going to go to work for me, and that I can control the risks based on what I know, like, and understand. That is how you, that's the success pattern right there. I mean, the six laws of wealth, like forget about all the, the ideas. Oh, you should invest in crypto. Oh, you should invest in real estate. Listen, let's get down to the laws. How do you become wealthy? There are six laws and 10 rules to prosperity. Any of you that signed up for the three-day training this weekend, you will get the six laws of wealth and the 10 rules to prosperity. And I swear to you, if you follow those and you stick to those six laws, you will become wealthy. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Because those laws are laws, just like gravity. Go up to the top of your building that you're in and jump you will learn what the law of gravity means. And it doesn't matter after you jump, if you try to fly, flap your wings and try to stop or bend or change that law, none of that will work. We will be seeing you on the news as the pancake that decided to try to defy the law of gravity. The laws of wealth are identical. They can't be bent, they can't be changed, they can't be modified, they're laws, folks. So that is the one big important thing that you need to understand. So William, I always choose to be in control of my money and being in control of my money means not putting any money in a 401k. I'll be, I'll be 100% honest with all of you. Even contrary to what my CPA told me to do, 
He said, you should open a 401k up and max it out because you're paying too much in taxes. I said, no, I'm not putting money in a 401k. Now I have self-directed IRAs, but I don't fund them. I put all of my money into my infinite banking policies where I am in control of them and I do a very good job of moving it. If I need write-offs, I understand the Augusta rule. I buy vehicles that weigh over 6,000 pounds. I, I sometimes invest in, well, normally invest in real estate, just not really doing much now. And I get depreciation that all helps. Now, would a 401k help me pay less in taxes? It would, but I have to look at the, the, the reward versus the risk. I don't wanna give up control of my money until I'm 59 and a half. I want to use that money today to work for me today to be able to take advantages of opportunities today because I firmly believe that taxes are going one direction and that's up. And I firmly believe that my dollars are going to get weakened significantly as time goes by. So I don't want my money sitting somewhere where my dollars are getting weaker by the day and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. So sorry I went long with that one, William, but that's, uh, that's a, a nerve with me. Our self-directed IRA safe from bail-ins? You mean bail-outs or bail-ins? Bail so Cindy's asking, are self-directed IRAs safe? Yeah, they're, a self-directed IRA is just the custodial account. Your money's sitting in a money market account until you decide to direct where it's going. So there is no risk until you then deploy that money and then whatever you deploy it into, maybe it has risk, maybe it doesn't. That's, that's up to you. One other thing I did want to hit because somebody was asking, a lot of you right now have equity in your homes. We're going to cover this in the three day, but I'm just going to really quickly do it. Uh, yes, Kevin, the, the Daytona mastermind, the money multiplier mastermind is sold out. We are seeing we, if we can open up some more slots. As of right now, it is a sold out event. Um, stay tuned to that, Kevin. We might have a couple more seats opening, but they're going to go fast, fast, fast. Um, okay, so you're already in or you're not or whatever. Let's just say you got equity in your house and you can use that equity today at 3.9%, which would be very low and that's not gonna maintain. Would it make sense to then take this money out and move it into the infinite banking concept or, or let's just say into a specially designed and engineered whole life? Well, we know that a whole life policy is gonna pay 5.2 to 6% with dividends. So if this is all you did, if you just took the money from your HELOC and you just moved it into the whole life, and you stop there, I would say, no, do not do that. But if you went from there and then you then deployed the money from your policy into private lending or some investment that's going to pay you, I always say over 6%, but let's just say I lend that money to somebody through private money club at 12%. Now, the money that I got from my home equity is now making money twice making money in the policy. So this would be the spread. And the spread is the amount the policy pays me minus the cost of capital, which is between three and 5%. And every year that spread goes up because your money compounds uninterrupted here. But then I move it over here and I make 12% on this private loan that I made right here. Now that makes a ton of sense. So as long as you take this step and you make the money from your policy go to work, then it's game on. But if you just get, you know, somebody tells you, let's take money from your home equity. And it's so funny, Joseph just walked in because he heard his name, which is home equity line of credit. But if you move your money from the home equity line into the whole life and you just stop there, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I just don't. I, I don't think you're making your money work hard enough for you. Uh, can I transfer? Oh, gosh, Colleen, Colleen, can I transfer my current whole life policy to an IBC? please get on a call with us. I am very, very, very against ever, 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 ever replacing an old whole life insurance policy, even if it's designed just as life insurance. And I want you to understand why I'd love to look at it. Now, if you had the old VUL and old universal life and old IBC, or I'm sorry, um, IUL policy that are all out of surrender, game on, get those out of there and get them into the specially designed whole life. An old whole life is kind of like fine wine. The older it gets, the better it gets. Every whole life is like that. The older they get, the better they get. So even if it isn't designed right, it's probably still a pretty darn good policy and can still be used for the infinite banking concept. Uh, Ra, 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 I think it's Raul or Raul. Uh, if I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. Can I use a business line of credit to fund the IBC? You'd have to get on a call. I don't know what the interest rate is. I don't know what the uses are. Typically, I would say that's not a good idea unless you got a really low interest rate business line of credit. Um, I just don't like taking borrowed money and moving it into infinite banking unless we know exactly what you're doing with that money, the second phase. 
So a lot of people ask us that. And I, I often have my guard up because I think, oh, it's some financial advisor trying to get me to say, oh, yeah, take money from the business line of credit, and move it into the infinite banking. And that's all you need to do. Absolutely not. I'm going to tell you no. But if I knew your situation, I knew the specifics about the business line of credit, and I knew what you're going to do to make that money go to work, then we can have a very honest conversation as to whether or not that makes sense or doesn't. Nine times out of the 10, it does not. So hopefully that's a good answer for you. Okay, private money lending. Yeah. So just Stephen, Stephen will put the links up one last time as we wrap today. Um, just book a call with us and we certainly will get into that. I just don't want to put that out there because I might answer your question and say, yeah, basically, if you're going to be doing all these things, it makes sense. But somebody else might hear that different and be like, oh, I'm going to go take out a business line of credit. I'm going to then put that money in the whole life. And then they're not going to take that next step and lend that money through private money club or through some other source. That's a bad business decision. It just is. And it's and, and anybody that tells you to take money from a home equity line or somewhere else and just move it into a whole life or an IUL without telling you the next phase is just trying to make a commission. And I hate to say that, but I've been, I've been kind of getting, what's the word, Stephen? Um, irritable or what the hell is the word I'm looking for? I, annoyed because there's a lot of hanky panky going on. You know, when we first started doing the infinite banking concept and teaching this, we were in a world where there really wasn't a whole lot of competitors and there really wasn't a lot of people in the space except for people we knew, liked and, and knew, understood this. So we were all just friends. Now you got a bunch of jackass, you know, insurance agents and advisors coming in saying, oh, this is a great way for me to sell more IUL. This is a great way for me to sell more whole life by just calling it infinite banking concept and using the buzzword. And it pisses me off to no end because you know what? Those are a bunch of generalists trying to be heart surgeons and that's not what they are. They don't even understand what it is we do. Folks, here's the one thing I will tell all of you that are remaining. The money multiplier, everybody that's on this teaching, all of us are specialists. We do one thing and one thing only at the money multiplier. And that is the infinite banking concept. We live it, we breathe it, we teach it, we do it, we use it. And our entire family does too. We understand all of it. We don't sell life insurance. Do not call us to buy that life insurance policy that your estate attorney told you to buy. Do not call us to buy an annuity. Do not call us to invest your money. Do not call us to do anything other than the infinite banking concept. Let me parallel that. Let's just say you, you start having heart problems, like your chest is hurting. You have your heart's hurting you. You go to your physician. Your physician is a generalist. They can, you know, cure your common cold, the flu. They give you prescriptions for this, that, or the other thing. Are you going to go to your, phys your physician, your general physician, and say to them, doc, doc, I think I'm having a heart attack. I need you to operate on me right now. And your physician says, well, I remember learning about this in, in medical school, but I've never done it. I'm happy to try. Are you going to feel really good that the person that's never done it, that said they learned about it, you know, when they were in, in medical school and they're willing to give a shot on you to fix your heart? Or are you going to say, no, doc, hold on a second. Can you refer me to a specialist, a heart surgeon that has done this thousands of times, that knows exactly how to do this, that has a good track history of success? Folks, we are that heart surgeon in this world. We do one thing and one thing only. And we have a perfect track history, not even like a 99.9% .9 track history, a perfect one. Go on Reddit or anywhere else. Find one person that says what we're teaching and what we're doing is wrong. There isn't one because we don't have a single client that's ever mad at us because what we teach works exactly how we teach it. Now you can screw it up, but if you follow what we tell you and you do the different things we teach, it's going to work 100% of the time. So if that's what you're looking for, the heart surgeon, the specialist, the person that just does, the team that just does one thing, we're that. If you want a generalist, I don't know why you just spend an hour and a half with us. You got the wrong people. If you want to buy life insurance, call, call State Farm, call New York Life. I'll, I'll refer you to a couple of guys over there. They'll sell you lots of life insurance. We're not trying to sell you life insurance. We're trying to solve your money problem through a process, through a system. That system just happens to use the machine, which is a specially designed and engineered whole life, which we intentionally design, design so that our commissions are drastically reduced to the tune of 60 to 90%. If that's what you're seeking, man, you're in the right place. And I will say to all of you, I hope any of you that want that specialist, that heart surgeon, I hope to see you this weekend because I'm going to be spending an awful lot of freaking time preparing and planning 
what I'm going to teach you on Friday. And the entire team is going to just knock it out of the park as we always do. And we're going to get you ready for this storm that's coming because it's not even the fact that the storm isn't on the radar anymore. The crosses just got crossed. It is called the inverted yield curves. And it just happened this week, Monday and Tuesday. The writing's on the wall, folks. The recession's coming. Are you ready? All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them. But I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Click that alert button. Actually, smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.